Rub up your engines! Well, everybody knows I'm not really a fan of GM products, but a lady just bought this 2022 Blazer because her Lexus was finally falling apart. She drives like a maniac. She didn't even have mufflers on the thing. All right? So she wanted something. She's not happy with the speed of this. She liked Lexus better, but she wanted all wheel drive from around Albany, New York. She wants something to pull her jet ski so she can have front wheel drive and rear wheel drive when she's going in and out of these New York State worn out old ramps for boats, right? So we're gonna check this out. You'll see what you get and whether it's worth buying or not. Now she was smart. She got the six cylinder engine non-turbo she can get a turbo four got a nine-speed automatic it doesn't have a cvt so in that respect it's not bad on the highway she can get 25 26 on the highway and for an all-wheel drive vehicle that's not bad for something of this size she's on the short side she wanted something that's a little higher and that's really comfy inside and she's totally happy they got very comfy seats got plenty of room in it even though americans more or less call this a small suv now she drives her father around in this and he hated the lexus she had he didn't like the back seat he got in the back seat of this before she bought it and said he loves it it's comfortable they do have them set for comfort. You might say, why didn't you go out and buy a Toyota? Well, guess what? She paid 28 grand for this, which is about 20,000 less than the sticker price when it was brand new. It's only got 30 something thousand miles on it, okay? She was trying to look at Toyotas, but the ones with well over 100,000 miles, we're still going for about 40 grand and up. So uh, this is what she picked up. Now, she wished it was a little bit quicker. It's got like 303 horsepower or so. It's not slow, but it is hooked up to that GM nine-speed transmission mission for better gas mileage and it, when she puts it in sport mode it's a little zippier but she'd wish it was a bit zippier than that but that's as zippy as they get when you got a nine speed transmission that gm makes now let's say it was an austrian transmission she wouldn't be complaining that and this thing would probably have oh 30 40 percent better acceleration with one of those but they don't put them in these gm puts their own stuff in them i'll take a look under the hood 3.6 liter and you can see Hey, it fits in nicely. It is a GM. You'll have to work on it at some point in time. But everything's easily accessible. There's no turbocharger. It puts out 303 horsepower or so. So it is a decent engine. The automatic transmission, you can see it there upside down. Nine speeds that GM builds themselves. Some people don't mind them. Some people hate them. Some people like them. My advice with a vehicle like this is, if you think about buying one, road test it first. Just like she did to see if she likes the comfort of the car. My brother-in-law one time bought a car without road testing it. Brand new. He got in, he took a trip. Oh, my neck's killing me, he said. I can't stand this. Mind you, it was, guess what? A Korean car. It was a Hyundai, right? So what did he do? He went out and bought a Honda instead. He loves the Honda. It's got more comfortable seats. Much better car anyways. He just bought the Hyundai because he was saving money, you know? <laughs> but if you don't like the way that it goes, don't buy it because there's nothing you can do about it. That's the way these transmissions are. It's just, you got to road test it. And if you don't like the way it drives, don't buy it. Because that's how they are. They're not as bad as they were when they first came out, where they missed shifts. And they got a lot of the computer stuff settled down, the software. But if you don't like the way it drives, even if you're buying a new one, you still want to road test it. If you don't like the way that it shifts, don't buy it. Now, of course, the advantage of this setup is it's a normal gasoline engine. It's not a hybrid it doesn't have giant battery packs or generators it's engines that people still know how to work on so in the future something goes wrong there's many guys that can fix it unlike hybrid or fully electric cars that hardly anybody knows how to work on them let's take a look inside before we put the computer and then she is short it's all the way up it's going all the way back but wait a second it says ram right here you don't see too many of these <laughs> she likes her whole floor mat so she put them in <laughs> Sounds pretty solid. She got stuff in there. That's the rattle that you heard. And regular gear shift looks nice, right? You can play with all these. It is nicely set up. We'll start her up. It is a push button start, but they all are these days. Got a nice Chevy logo. Beautiful steering wheel. Nicely set up dash. Can't complain about that. Doesn't have a sunroof. I hate them anyways. I find them annoying. Really nice setup interior. Plenty of leg room. Her father's real happy in the back. And she's happy because he's not driving now. <laughs> and you can see it's got 39,608 miles. She just bought it a month ago. Full climate control. Heated seats. In case you're very particular, you can have really hot, a little bit hot. 
tiny bit hot or no hot at all. Oh, it does have electric parking brakes. They're all going that way. There's nothing you can do about that. So let's get out my fancy scan tool, see what's going on inside. So I will plug it in and we'll shut the door so this thing will shut up. Boy, it's annoying. And man, I gotta say, this seat goes way back. Short, long, it's set up pretty well. We'll do diagnostics. It already knows what it is. Chevy Blazer, VIN number, 3.6 liter. Okay, here we go. Gonna do a full topology scan of all the different modules and while it's doing that. I gotta say, these seats are really comfortable. It's nice looking. It was fast. Now, it's got two trouble codes. There'll probably be nothing codes, but we'll see what they are. Body control module, keyless entry transmitter, happens all the time. They tell you there's something wrong with the keyless remote, and there's nothing wrong with it. So, the race, that, that could happen any time in the past if somebody tried using a key that had a bad battery. There's one other code, the amplifier for the radio. Who knows? Let's see what that says. These are basically nothing codes. Communication with the radio, okay, <laughs> we'll erase that too. Could have easily had a new battery put in. But look at some live data. We're gonna get a ton of information because it's a late model car, it's a 2022. Look at all the data we can mess around with. Just for kicks, let's look at the transmission first. Okay, remember black is good. All kinds of information on the transmission. Now it's got bad data for the five volt reference too. Now this is one time that computers are a little bit too touchy because it just went black. It was 4.99, 5.01. There's such a tiny differential. That shows red because it's 0 0.01 above this. It really doesn't mean anything. They're too temperamental with the 5 volt reference. They shouldn't have such a, like that one just went 4.99 C and this one did before too so it doesn't mean anything. Notice it didn't have any codes, that's just, they get too touchy. The computers work on a five volt reference and you go, you know, one one hundredth of a volt off. It shows it's, the data's off, but that's pretty much meaningless. But about 12 volts or something or zero, yeah, you got a problem, but not that little bit. Here, the computer's just a little bit too sensitive. Engine data, take a look at that. Again, black is good, red is bad. The mass airflow is good. It's almost the same, 3.5, 3.6 liter engine, so that's good. The air fuel equivalents, ratio command is one which is perfect look at this short term fuel term on bank two and one is zero and then a little up up and down because you're moving around what we really want to care about is the long term and as we can see here the long term trim is only one percent that's just about nothing the oil pressure is good realize with the modern cars they don't put anything on the dash there's no oil pressure center there they can't read anything but the computer knows my computer can access that information any good mechanic can access it they just don't give it to you anymore you got backup camera and it does have a nice sky eye view so we can see in front side i like those modern cameras i still like looking though my neighbor might come flying out from my trees there and it would be all over so got forward camera till you start moving right over that big old bump now you can see it turned itself off once you got going these rough roads it rides quite well realize it's not really a truck it is a unibody construction which is what they're going for in this suv the original blazers were actual trucks had real frames and stuff on them. these are all unibody construction they're made for rideability she likes the smooth ride she likes being up a little bit in the air being around albany new york and my nemesis it does have the auto start stop, which she doesn't like. I will turn that off. She does too. Here we go, we'll give it a little gas. She wishes it has more horsepower. Not me. I can feel that 302 horsepower or so right away. It's got plenty of get up and go. She's a fast driver though. I mean, she's the only person I ever met who pulled all the catalytic converters and the mufflers off her Lexus and it sounded like a race car. So this is plenty fast enough. High enough up in the air, you're not outrageously high, but it's a comfy driving position. And as you can see, hey, it turns perfectly fine in front of people. <laughs> I gotta say, it's a nice riding vehicle. I, I agree with her. For the price, hey, she say 20 grand over buying a new one, and it's only got 36,000 miles on it. It's shifting really smooth. I can't complain about it. A choice of a fake analog, which is really digital speedometer, and the actual miles per hour in front of you. If you're one of those people that likes one versus the other, you got both of a pair. Last as long as possible, do like I did. Turn that auto start stop off as soon as you start the car. And a little warning for the side work find as the guy passed us in the Mercedes. We're headed back in, I gotta say. It's a nice driving machine. I think she made a pretty good choice on this. Even though I'm not a Chevy fan. So what do I think? Well, I think she's insane. It's plenty fast enough for me. I think took off. Doesn't have any particular problems. She saved 20 grand buying a used one. And hey, if she would have bought a used Toyota, it would have been another 20 or 30 grand more than this. Sometimes money speaks volumes. And in this case, Hey, 
I got to say, I am pleasantly surprised by this vehicle. All right? It is a six, it's a non-turbo. I wouldn't touch the turbo four with a 10 foot pole and she said she wouldn't either. Hey, now you know what you get with one of these things. Maybe find a good deal like she did on a used one and save yourself 20 grand or more. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.